Yes. Uh, hello. Uh, this is Jose Pagan from CU Boulder. Uh, I worked briefly at a biotech company that worked with biofilm. So spoiler for the question is, what are you doing to understand biofilm buildup in the LEAF pro, uh, project and also the future of uh, resisting biofilm production? Mm -hmm. The biofilm uh, investigation and mitigation is not an objective of this short-term experiment. That would definitely be something we would want to look into when we can conduct longer-term experiments. Um, in fact, because we are very success-driven and frankly, if we can grow, uh, have evidence that we've grown plants on the moon and get anything, any information back about their responses and phenotype, um, as, as well as the plant samples, it will be an extraordinary success. So frankly, we are um, trying to avoid <laughs> biofilm buildup as much as possible in this short-term experiment, um, but it is definitely something that we will want to investigate in the future, um, as, especially regarding a lot of the um, already uh, you know, research. There's a lot of existing research that is ongoing uh, in this area for biofilm mitigation and prevention, um, as well as the question of what's a good balance between good microbes and bad microbes. Um, and, how the a healthy microbiome will afford stress resilience versus um, uh, wanting to avoid pathogenic uh, organisms as well as clogging up your plumbing with biofilm. So that's a very, very complex problem and complex question. But with the short 14 day uh, time during the lunar day, uh, we won't have a chance to investigate that this time. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, maybe we can bring our other speaker, online speaker up and have Mehdi come up to the stage if there are questions for the other payloads as well. You can, oh, can you see? Oh, you can go back. Do we have her? Oh, I stopped sharing my screen. Excellent. Awesome. I can go check the online chat as well. Is Quick question about LEAF. So is LEAF planned to be operational um, past the so there's a sample that will come back but then there's are there additional parts of the experiment that will be operational past the three to five days absolutely um so because we have uh, our own onboard communication systems to communicate directly to earth as well as um, solar power um, a portion of the samples will be returned in a, in a sample contained sample unit um, but also a portion of growing seedlings will stay in the payload to keep growing for as long as we have sunlight for power. Um, so we hope up to uh, 14 days, depending on how, when we're deployed. And um, we even have the potential for some of our plants to flower during that time. Uh, the Wisconsin fast plants, Brassica Rapa, that we will be flying are extremely um, fast growing and have been shown to be able to actually flower within a 14 day period. So that would be <laughs> an amazing image if we could get it. So we'll be sending back the imagery and the gas sensor data uh, during that whole time period after the crew leaves. Joan, uh, CEO Boulder. I have a question for the LDA talk. Uh, so do you take measurements at one location or multiple locations? I think that's for Herdy. <laughs> Um, it's gonna be just one location. I mean, it's it's of course better if we can do that in multiple locations. Um, but because of the uh, precious time for the uh, astronauts, so uh, we will ask just one location for the measurement. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, and you had mentioned that you'll hopefully have complementary measurements from another instrument that's already been deployed on the surface. Um, do you, that's not the case, I don't think for the LDA. So it's interesting, it'll be interesting to see how some of the, the suites that are being deployed from the CLIPS missions might complement some of what you all are able to see from these deployed instruments. Yeah, well, one of the things we wanna make sure at least early on, even if these are independent experimentation funded independently on, on independent missions is that at least we early on, we have enough discussions to understand what is our, uh, for example, things like what is our time reference, how precise the time reference between all these, all these instruments. So uh, if we're so lucky to get data from all these 
for more than one instrument at the time that we can actually correlate the events and understand. And, and, and so that, that's a work that needs to be done typically before you launch. And, and so we're, we're trying to be proactive into it and, and, and start that, those discussion early. Yeah, time reference is an important topic for a lot of folks. <laughs> you can't just have your cell phone camera. No. Ben, ben talked about yesterday. No, especially for, uh, for instruments that are going to remain autonomous for long durations. You have clock drifts. You have, even if you have, an, you start initially with the same time reference, you have clock drifts, et cetera. And so we need to understand how each experiment is dealing with that and what are the errors, what are the drifts. And so we, we can we can deliver the community a data set that they can actually correlate between between multiple measurements. Hi, uh, am I on? Uh, Hope Yishi, uh, University of Hawaii. Um, for um, Herdy, I'm wondering about the the um, blast zone um, consideration <laughs> up in the second talk, and whether you can you can be within the shadow zone and still have undisturbed soil. Um, we discussed a lot with the uh, NASA folks, and uh, we don't really get any answer <laughs> to that question. So um, uh, right now, you know, uh, we don't really understand the, you know, how the blast zone is, and also we try to kind of lower the system, but still we need the uh, decent side of the solar panel. So. Um, you know, we are not extremely sure if we can survive this you know, heavy blast. Like uh, some people say that the uh, HLS liftoff may be a lot more severe than the uh, Apollo uh, liftoff. So uh, uh, we'll see. We, I'm sorry, I cannot really answer to your question. Would you, in that case, would you uh, sacrifice being in the shadow for more instruments? Uh, the, yes, the, the shadow thing, yes. Um, we want to put place this instrument into, I mean, like a, a kind of sunlit first and then covered by the shadow. This is important. So we can measure the permittivity value in different temperature. Um, so uh, this is um, important, the, the most important to achieve our mission objectives. So uh, this has the highest priority. Uh, for the night survival and uh, in, in survival after the uh, uh, liftoff is uh, to us, it's kind of like a um, uh, additional. Um, well, it's hard to say, uh, but we 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 want to, but uh, yeah. And and, and uh, for the uh, the shadows, we thought about like maybe we can put uh, ask the crew to place the LDA in the. Uh, Kind of shadow of the uh, big boulder, or maybe uh, inside a crater or something. Um, but uh, I, I heard that the landing site selection team will look at the very very smooth known uh, boulder rich areas. So maybe we can find a good place which provides some uh, shadow for the blast of the lift off of Asia. So um, yeah. Uh, Sorry, I, I, it's not really answering to your question, but this is uh, the current status of, of, of our discussion. Thank you. Thanks. I think we have time for one short question. Do you have a question? Yeah, oh, Chip. I have just a quick question. Uh, Chip Shear from the University of New Mexico. Uh, many, is there an op, uh, optimum uh, diameter and depth for the drill core? It, yeah, so we're, I'm sorry. No. I was just going to, is there an optimum diameter and depth for the drill core? So uh, uh, we're, we're, we're just getting information about the toolkit that is basically being a baseline for, for Artemis. And, and the currently the diameter of the, the coring tool is four centimeter. And it can get cores down to about 30 to 40 centimeter. And so we're designing our SP to be slightly larger than 40 that 40 millimeter, four centimeter diameter. So we can compact the regolith as we push in. So we can get a better me um, mechanical coupling to the surface. We don't want to be exactly uh, the, the diameter of the hole. Um, the, 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 uh, during Apollo, when they did uh, core samples, there, there are a lot of documentation that shows that these, uh, that these holes remain 
the walls remain intact and don't collapse. So most likely we'll, we'll still have an intact hole going down to the, to the bottom of the core, but there is always a risk as they remove a core, some of that refills and you cannot go to the full depth. So while you core at 40 centimeter, once you put this, push the seismometer, you may only go to 30 because you refill partially that hole. And so, um, so we're baselining basically for the capability of the coring tool, but there is a possibility that mechanically the, the hole will not, uh, will not go as deep as the coring tool can, can go. And, and I think also, you know, if one uses a, something like a double drive tube, Correct. at least from Apollo, Correct. you know, they penetrated maybe 72 centimeters. Yeah. I think the drive, the double drive right now goes to 40 centimeters. Okay. Is the double drive that goes to forty? Yeah. But but all, all that is really in flux. Uh, I mean, we can tell that there's a lot of design going on right now, and so we're 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 the, the tools themselves a bit because I, I I'm guessing and, and I can probably speak for all experiments. We are going to use some of those levers, some of those tools, and so we're floating requirements of what the instruments needs these tools also to do beyond just geology geology. Uh, as a geology instruments. And, and so those tools most likely will change slightly as we infuse some of the requirements through them. Let's thank our speakers again. And if you have questions for them, please do feel free to reach out. It's gonna be exciting to see how these progress over the next few years. And with that, um, we will end our Artemis deployed mission session. Thanks to Chip um, and to everybody for their great questions. And we will transition quickly to the league town hall. Thanks everybody. <laughs>